Hey guys, it's Paul, combat veteran, MMA fighter, YouTuber, and today we are checking out another Team Fortress 2 video. This is how it feels to play Demo Man. Let's get into it. We must stop, little car! Yeah. Help! Incoming! Ah! Okay, I love how that M203 grenade, like, rotated, like it was tumbling. Didn't even have any arc at all. Yeah, zero. Like, it's clearly, there's an aerodynamic way it's going to fly and has to come out of the barrel. And yet, it's tumbling hopelessly. And the outfits, the outfits on this are ridiculous. The, the, the golf hat. Oh my god, it's, it's the sandwich. That's great. He's got a, he's got a pet cat, a bird, several cats, and is being led around by a sandwich that he can't get because he, his hands don't work. That was not... <sighs> Do you know what that was? That was a recreation of a competitive clip featuring a very brave pyro and the reality of how quickly an uber demo man can cut the enemy team in half. With oh, wow. That was pretty cool, actually, to recreate uh, a game, a match in, like, Source Filmmaker. That's really cool. That lucky sticky kill on the scout and the quick switch to grenades, I'm able to blow up three players and leave a fourth one fending for his life. Ah! 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 Make no mistake, Demo Man is really powerful. Throw some sticky bombs over here and toss some pipe grenades over there, and before you know it, boom! Skadoosh, blue team, gone. But sit down a new player as Mr. Only Has Projectiles, and you better be prepared to cover your ears. Ah! Uh, go to hell! The learning process for Demo Man looks something like this, spamming stickies with no sense of timing while relegating the grenade launcher to... Wait, 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 did he have a blue turtle shell? Dude, what? It, it is like all... I love it. The blue turtle shell, Mario Kart, classic. Uh, you know, emergencies. Oh, shit! I'm out of stickies! And the strategy can work to an extent because, let's be honest, having eight explosives loaded in one gun is kind of ridiculous. Oh, oh my god. Uh, uh guys? Do the Geneva Convention supply to video games? But hold on, stickies can't be detonated for 0.7 seconds after shooting them, so don't be surprised if sticky spamming gets you killed by every other scout. I don't usually kill morons this fast. Soldier. Scotland is not a real country. Sniper. <laughs> Bloody hell, you wolf. And spy. Spy! Indeed, you drunken wretch. Uh, you are an embarrassment. Ah, uh, so is the godforsaken squad. Okay, Scout definitely seems like the guy who would have, like, an Instagram with about 40 followers and about 4,000 pictures. And I say this as a, someone with an Instagram with, you know, like, 40 followers, which you should follow. I, I Though I only have probably, like, 40 pictures, so I, I at least have a better ratio than, than Scout. So sticky spamming isn't perfect. Do we give up? No, we just do it better. As long as you stay about this far away from the action, at this point where your stickies travel the entire length of their arm time, you should be free to go on a rampage. It just makes everything so much easier. So I'm just gonna point this out because I am a combat veteran, right? 
Uh, the U.S. military uh, does not have sticky bombs. We are actually prohibited by the a anti-landmine treaty from employing any defensive or area denial weapon that is set off passively or by the actions of the victim. So no trip wires, no um, triggers, nothing like that. The only weapons or mine type weapons that we can employ are those which are set off manually by an actual military, you know, a controller. And that is because, of course, in a lot of countries, especially ones that had pretty severe civil wars, both sides would use landmines to deny territory to the other. But, of course, these landmines would get scattered and not picked back up. It's extremely hard to pick up landmines uh, to clear a minefield. And so you would see children and, and civilians... Uh, getting killed and maimed by these landmines for sometimes decades after these wars ended. In fact, because the landmines are relatively cheap, as simple mechanics, they actually become more dangerous as time goes on as parts start to fail. So, again, you wouldn't see something like a, a sticky bomb in the U.S. military's arsenal unless, of course, it was set off with a manual detonator. This distance puts you in control and ensures that you'll never have to do anything difficult ever again. Oh, oh man! You suck! Yeah, at some point you're gonna have to learn more than sticky spamming. But don't worry, there's a reason these things are designed to stick. Man's ability to control when stickies explode provides perhaps the most consistent source of kills in the entire game, the Sticky Trap. Not only can you consistently lock down a choke point with a sticky bomb launcher, you can then reload the damn thing and be ready to pick apart the pack of panicked perpetrators after the fact. Get on, bloody dead! Stop that! But there's more to it than just dumping stickies on choke points. You can store a bunch of damage anywhere. Hey, Red Team, that was a great overcharge. Can't wait to see the next one. Exert a little patience. If you find some unsuspecting snipers, lay down two stickies at once so they can't even respond to the detonation. And if a medic so happens to walk into them, that's an epic sticky trap. Put some distance between you and those cheeky scouts with just one sticky. Just one sticky. Wait, does this count as a sticky trap? Does that mean is Every sticky bomb its own trap? You've seen it, haven't you? The power within each sticky bomb? Yes, yes, I see! Every sticky I shoot guards the entire radius around it! The very idea of a trap is subjective! Good! A trap is not subjective, it, it, it has a definition. It's basically a, well, any negative outcome situation that's negative to you and presumably favorable to the setter of the trap and is initiated by some action on the part of the victim, as opposed to, say, an attack, which is initiated by the uh, aggressor. Good. Now that you see the power of every undetonated sticky, you have opened your third eye. Um, second eye. <laughs> that's, that's pretty funny. I like that. I get it now. That's the beauty of manual detonation. If I stay calm and don't detonate, it doesn't matter that these stickies were meant for this spy. They're the perfect trap for this rocket jumping soldier I was totally expecting. <laughs> stickies haven't missed until you detonate them. No choke point, no problem. With enough stickies and enough patience, the entire world becomes oh, one big choke point. Stop. So that's actually interesting because that is in military parlance, sometimes called area denial. And what this often is used for, he's talking about, of course, punishing and killing enemies that enter this area that they've denied. But it, what militaries are more likely to do is use it to force the enemy to go into a location where you want them to actually divert them to a, your own trap or ambush. So in this instance, right, if I was to mine this entire field, 
I the idea in, in again in a military parlance perhaps would be to kill these these people to enter it but you would instead just make it so that the rail yard is a place where no one wants to go and you would coordinate with your team to force the enemy to go into say an open field where a sniper can can work his magic um, or another area where the fight strongly favors your team and so that's yeah called area denial the act of a lap taking an entire swath of, of terrain and making it so that the enemy cannot go there either through passive measures like this sometimes it's things like barbed wire or concertina wire uh even tank traps um or of course through defensive positions right you could deny an area to enemy armor by digging in a bunch of anti-armor teams and you know making it so that you know they the anti-armor teams you know maybe attack the first tank that comes through and then the armored column goes around but goes around into the area where you expect to fight them. Stop it! All this sticky trapping seems almost too good, right? But with how vulnerable... <laughs> All this sticky trapping seems almost too good, right? <laughs> I'm talking here! All this sticky trapping seems almost too good, right? Okay, now there are two of them! What kind of sick joke is this? <sighs> is, is it safe? Can I... Keep it up! Oh, uh, all this sticky trapping seems almost too good, right? But with how comically vulnerable he is to being bum-rushed, I think it's fine to reward Demo Man for seeing it coming. Okay, that's pretty funny. The old school iPod white headphones and a UN style bray. Okay. We've been protecting you! That's what you get! Of course, sticky traps don't detonate themselves! No, Scout! That's you scared me into detonating too early! Ah! A good sticky trap demands your full attention! I in other words, Demo Man is designed to have tunnel vision! Ah! He's taking the wrong fucking time! That's right! Yeah, I like the pun, because it was a tunnel, get it? The class with one eye has tunnel vision. Deep lore! Doesn't no matter when I'm setting up an important trap in the heat of the moment, it's not realistic for me to turn around between each sticky and reset my crosshair. In other words, if I'm gonna get stabbed, mother of mercy, I'm gonna get stabbed. Ah, but forget the spies and snipers for a minute, the last thing you want is to become your own worst enemy. I mean, okay, I don't know if it's just me, but after growing emotionally attached to some carefully laid sticky trap that will surely get a triple kill and make daddy proud. I struggle to pay attention to anything else as I play with one hand behind my back for 40 seconds getting nothing done until I finally say fuck it and randomly detonate, somehow killing a horribly unfortunate spy. You appear to have trodden on the mind. <laughs> I am this spy. Okay. I feel like this is reminding me so much of first GoldenEye 007 for the Nintendo 64, a classic game where prox mines were the scourge of everyone's existence, right? Where you would put them above the doorway, blast, they would go off as your friends walked through, and you would put them, of course, in the uh, screen door that you could walk through and you would just murk people, right? You would just lock down those areas. It was a, it was a hoot. Perhaps the most harrowing downside is that when it comes time to push forward, you may be given a choice. <gasps> no, I can't detonate here. Not now, I'll die for sure. But my team, but I deserve to live. If I die, if I die, no, no. No! No! You know, this game is kind of grisly. <laughs> I let them down. I can't keep relying on this thing, man! Sure, it's consistent, but it's so slow. What if I need damage now? If death stares me in the face, if my targets are launched, there's only one thing to rely on then. 
Damn, that was a good shot. I live for pipe grenades. The thrill of trusting your instincts and saying, I don't care that you have a medic because I'm just going to hit three pipes in a row. All right, see you later. Goodbye. The power I feel melting one heavy after the other, granting them the power of flight while accidentally killing those around them. And the rush of knowing that the only way I'm getting out alive is two clean pipes. Hitting two pipes on scouts ain't easy, but it always kills, even if they're overhealed. Denied. No. No, 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 no. That medic did not just perfectly tie my healing crossbow bolt in between my two pipes. He did not! Hello, yeah, police, I'd like to report a robbery! To guarantee the second pipe, do your best to shoot the first one at their feet. It'll pop him right up for an easy twofer. Okay, Heavy, are you sure you want to play this game? This doesn't tend to work out for you. Oh dear, it appears I have underestimated my opponent's critical thinking skills while simultaneously overestimating my body's ability to effectively move around corners. I should take note for the future not to chase explosive wielding enemies around said corners, as they naturally have a sizable advantage due to not requiring a direct line of sight to deal bodily harm. It certainly does not help that I am at my most sluggish while revving up my gun, a precursor to shooting aforementioned gun, and therefore killing my enemy. Oh shit! Shooting. Okay, so I'm just gonna, I'm gonna put this out there. The military's 40 millimeter grenade launcher, the M203, and I think they have a new, sexier iteration that's basically the same thing. Only shoots. What if it's only like 100 meters? Like it's not very far at all. And the grenade is only effective within outside of 30 meters because it has to spin a fixed number of times before it arms. So, all this means is that you almost never would play it inside or like this, right? You would do so at a huge distance, and you would shoot it usually in an arc because you want to shoot over, say, cover, over a tree line, into a house, something, anything but straight, a straight line. And it would, what is also neat is that you can trade out different kinds of ammo in the M203, so you can use it to, say load it with like a paint or chalk round and so you can paint an area to help mark it for example to uh designate it as a helicopter landing zone or to mark a target for a fixed wing aircraft or of course you could also load it with a smoke round to release a cloud of smoke that will obscure the enemy's vision of your position for the feet can be a gamble but when it works but where you don't use it is indoors in a close quarters fight Works. Oh, oh, it works. Cause baby, you don't work. Landing pipes will always feel amazing because you can't take a single one of them for granted. You never know when even that scoped in sniper is just gonna get up and move. Ah, the, yo, 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 I'm joking, I'm joking, I missed on purpose. It's a joke, I'm friendly. Oh. Hitting pipes is often the difference between living and dying, and almost every time it comes down to intuition. Owning you, you eat shit! When you're in the kind of fast-paced situation that calls for pipes, there's no time to ask yourself questions about air strafing or hitboxes. <laughs> These animations are great. It's pure intuition. Extends that intuition to your sticky bombs and it won't be long until you're landing one, two punches like it's nothing. But how does one access all of this intuition? My best advice is to equip the Sticky Jumper, a no-damage launcher that allows you to do incredible triple mid-air jumps, forcing yourself into the enemy base so that you can get in as much practice as possible. <laughs> pipes are great. I like pipes. I love pipes. So that you can... Uh, am I missing something, lore experts? I mean, other than the fact that he's obviously an alcoholic. But what's with the, the 
pipes and the drinking. Get in as much practice as possible. Ah. Remember that pipes are best aimed at large, unmissable groups, so keep an eye out and... Uh, uh, huh. Large, un... That's exactly what would happen to me. I have zero accuracy in these sort of games. Unmissable groups, so keep an eye out for those good opportunities. Uh, and, and never underestimate the element of surprise. <laughs> All been there, bro. You wake up. You're speaking with a Scottish accent. You're wearing half of a EOD suit. You've got a stolen 203, four M67 frag grenades. You have a broken bottle of Jack Daniels, and there's a warrant out for your arrest. This is known in the military as a Tuesday. No. In the military, unlike Team Fortress 2, when you're super hungover, your medic heals you with uh, IVs. Yeah, the medics all have IV bags, and um, if you if your medic does you a solid, they will stick you and rehydrate you um, right there with some saline solution. And it re it feels like getting supercharged by the medic. It really does. <laughs> Wait, is that a real thing? Does does Demo Man go on a drunken rampage with a broken whiskey bottle? It's on! It's on like Move! That's right! That's, that's right, that's right. It's my job to destroy these sentries and these sentries and these sentries and God, am I, am I, am I seeing okay or is that a lot of engineers? I mean, that's a lot of engineers. I, bye, <laughs> see ya. Uh, the, the, the thing that I can't fucking get. All right, and listen, because this is, this is serious. <laughs> these close ups. Dude, this is actually hard for me to watch. Like, this is accurately a representation of what it feels like for me when I'm drunk. Sentries that don't serve any purpose other than just catching people off guard. You're not even defending anything. You're just, you know, the, scra the scout walks by. He goes, hey, yeah, I'm, 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 I'm playing the game. I'm having fun. And then, <laughs> That's not fair. But engineers aren't going to stop building these things until people... Stop walking into them, all right? So please, I'm begging you to just check your corners and never let these engineers get away with this. Look both ways before you cross! Okay, mate. All right, you wanker. These badly spliced together dialogue. This, this is, this is ridiculous. Sentry! Oh my God, dang it! No, this isn't even defending anything. This sentry is just mean. All right, I will make sure that you suffer for this. But beyond, but more, but I'll go even further. You know what? I don't want to be too mean, but you engineers have to know how dead you are. Fuck. How much a devil man can just take control? I feel bad for what? this guy. Honestly, I'm sorry. Ooh, that was a steampunk skin. That's pretty cool. All right, give this engineer. <laughs> this isn't necessarily. So what's interesting is using 203s to destroy equipment is actually n not a great idea. See, e equipment, especially military grade equipment, is actually pretty hardened. And when it, grenades explode, right, they have obviously a small blast radius that has a concussive force that can be lethal. To soft tissue and then they have a larger range in which they uh, send shrapnel right but the problem with shrapnel is it's it has even less like pen penetration than even like a small arms round so just encasing a sentry gun let's say let's say in steel may not actually stop it from functioning 
if you shoot a 203 at it. Instead, what's more commonly relied on is either placing C4 on the device itself and setting it off remotely. Um, this is pretty common with uh, IEDs uh, when you have EOD folks uh, clearing them. Or less common is using something like um, white phosphorus or another sort of chemical burning well, white, 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 white phosphorus grenades. You put white phosphorus grenades on the hood or near an engine, and you pop them off, and then you stand back, and the white phosphorus grenades get so hot, they melt straight through the engine and disable the vehicle. Um, so you could do something similar with an, uh, an automated sentry. It's your fault, but I've got to send a message. Oh, no, 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 no. This engineer has the dispenser, teleporter, all the setup. I can't have that. I'm sorry, engineer, but this is the end for you. <laughs> yeah, that's exactly what it's like. That's that's the one. That's fucking engineers, man. They don't have a chance. What if you thought that was sad? Just wait to hear about the dispensers. These holy, these holy, del these holy delivery. We've all been there, dude. We've all been there. Deliverers of healing and ammo. It's so easy for Demo Man to turn them into death traps. I mean, I almost feel bad. They go to this, back to this place that is supposed to be safe and give the heals, but no, I, I'm sorry. It's just. But what really rubs the salt in the wounds is that the dispensers don't move. So, uh, let me explain. The uh, grenade, the pipes, the, the, the downside of the He may actually be drunk. Pipes, the grenade launch. Damn, we still have six more, eight more minutes of this. This is like listening to your drunk friend try to tell you a story where he's already told it to you sober and you, you know how it's supposed to go, but they're trying to tell it and you don't, they won't let you interrupt them. Launcher is that... Uh, it's hard to hit moving targets, right? But dispensers don't move! And not only that, everybody likes to be around dispensers! So you shoot the dispensers and whoa! What a surprise! Everybody dies! It's almost poetic. But no matter how you twist it, I'm gonna always be there, engineers! I'm gonna make your life as hard as I can! You can run, you can hide, you can try to save your buildings, but I'll be there. I don't care if you have the high ground, it doesn't matter to me. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Okay, uh, Mission accomplished. This, this engineer's team actually cares about him and his positioning and his base, and that's going to be a problem. Whoo, I'm going to need a medic, and to talk about that, I'm going to need some coffee. <laughs> Yeah, I also, when I'm hungover, I gotta hydrate first because coffee dehydrates you, the caffeine, right? It makes you feel good, but you've gotta rehydrate. I mean, smart me when I was younger and mostly dumber, but maybe maybe in this aspect, I was smart. When I would go out and I knew things were gonna get a little wild, I would pre-pour a big glass of water, sometimes even pre-fill a water bottle so that there was one greeting me on my kitchen counter and then there'd be another one on my nightstand. And that would allow me to function the next day because I rehydrated immediately. Stop! <clears throat> so, yes, Demo Man can trounce sentries all day long, but sometimes he needs help, and sometimes our German friend is not in the mood to cooperate. If we can get to Fault Uber, I will destroy all sentries and more. No! No, huh? Hold it! Ugh, not... Then how else do you expect to get through multiple sentry nests? Oh, please, I assure you the jury is waiting with bated breath to hear it. 
I am putting all of you negligent medics on trial. Mmm, mmm. This is, looks more like an inquisition to me. Just watch. I yell out, medic, to get his attention. You know, we're starting it simple. I then say, hit it, doc, and charge it, doc. He looks me in the eyes after I say this. He keeps his beam on me and keeps looking at me. According to page 14, section 4, subsection 3 of... Oh my god, that's, that's, that's done in the military style. Times New Roman, even the paragraph indentations. Yeah, that complies with the military style guide. TF2 etiquette, this officially means we have bonded, which, according to subsection 3, means he has to Uber me. I then cannot stress enough that he kept his beam on me, unbroken for the entirety of the remaining 16 seconds. Then, and can we get the footage on this for the, for the jury to see? Thank you. In direct response to me taking my first steps into danger, disconnected his beam, leaving me for dead. Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, I was baited! Sounds like a trap. He ubered the heavy, who could not even leave spawn. The heavy dies immediately. Why, medic? Why? I can be fighting the entire enemy front line with a fully charged crits medic behind me, only to turn around and see. Th I understand Ubering a heavy on the objective, but I swear half of these guys are just trying to reenact to meet the medic. What are you doing? I have no idea. It did look pretty cool on meet the medic. It looked really cool. The Uber's already over. Oh my god. In all seriousness, Demo does need a little help in most altercations, since he's not exactly meant to be taking them. Uh, uh, anyone? Anyone at all? Please, God, help to turn around! This is a real freaking embarrassment. Yeah, I know. Demo Man is an absurdly powerful damage dealer, but if someone wants him dead, it's not that hard to find an opening. <laughs> I say this because I want you to remember that Demo does have some shortcomings as I proudly display this ridiculous clip of me defending the last two feet of payload by safely stuffing an Uber charge with preemptive stickies, insta-killing a crits heavy, then destroying a sentry along with the engineer building it before going ahead to accidentally kill someone, intentionally kill someone, and finally out-snipe a sniper. God, I love this class. So get out there and lay some traps. Hit some pipes, but most of all, make sure someone out there regrets picking Engineer. Well, I'm here to tell you that as someone who, if you've watched my other videos, uh, reviles Engineers in all forms, uh, that I'm happy that there's a class who's dedicated to doing nothing but making the Engineer's life a living hell. This warms my heart and uh, is probably one of the feel-good stories of YouTube. Oh. Yeah! Screw you. I'm gonna go and play Minecraft. Turn your back into it, lads. Yes. They're they playing Minecraft? All right. It's a crossover episode. <laughs> Sir, you're doing good, lad. Affirmative. Right here! Yes! Nice! I wasn't supposed to happen! <sighs> what? Looks like y'all could use. <laughs> well, with a little help. Oh god, my head is killing me! Help! Nah. Please? <laughs> I guess that'll do. <sighs> Thanks. That's ah, nothing. Oh, hello, Ginger! I love how he's got the like old school Thor beard and and an umbrella hat. Can you mix and match skins here? Like different hats and different beards and stuff? I love you, man. 
Hey guys, once again, there's more. Within a few weeks of uploading this, I'll have a behind the scenes extras video uploaded with all sorts of bonus clips. This video is not sponsored, but I have rolled out a Teespring storefront featuring their highest quality t-shirts and sweatshirts. I wear these all the time and I swear they're really comfortable. Mm, mm, mm. All right guys, that was fun. Uh, definitely I'm going to link to his video below, right? You should support this guy. He does some cool, cool videos. I thought it was pretty funny. It kind of seems like the Russian badger of TF2 maybe. But check out my merch store. I have lots of stuff. And if you have ideas for other t-shirts and stuff that you want me to do, man, let me know in the comments. I, I really do read all the comments. I don't always get a chance to reply to them, um, but they do all get read. And uh, be sure to check out my second channel dedicated to Warhammer 40,000 and my Instagram. And, oh, the, the Mixed Martial Arts podcast I run with my brother, The Cage Potato Show. That is also linked below. So thank you guys again so much for watching. And be sure to uh, deal with that stuff I just talked to you about. And until next time, I will see you guys later.